The one thing going into tomorrow is we could probably get another slower day. Number one, again, the market needs to rest, needs to digest recent gains. The last thing you want to see if you're a bull and you believe in the you know, perma, well, not necessarily perma bull, but if you believe in the bull market thesis, the last thing you want to see is. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day. Uh, quiet, right? Quiet session today. Um, I don't think anybody is shocked. I mean, you had a really big move in the NASDAQ 100 for the last two weeks. Uh, very, very good uh, remount of the 50-day moving average. And it's kind of just gotten linear. And, you know, this was a, a perfect day uh, after taking out the all-time highs yesterday to kind of digest, to kind of relax, get its breath, uh, catch its breath, get its feet onto them, and kind of digest what happens next. And what happens next is a Fed meeting that is going to uh, come tomorrow. Uh, tapering on, tapering off. What's the long-term, what's the short-term prowess uh, of the economy? Personally, I think it's going to be a complete non-event again. I don't think just a simple one event, a one day meeting is going to dictate of what's going to possibly happen after the last 15, 18 months of an economy, global economy coming to a standstill and pretty much starting to recover, right? Everything's pretty much open right now. Things are starting to recover. People need to get back on their feet, right? So the idea of anything aggressive one way or another is probably not in the picture, but in this world, uh, anything is possible. So um, I think also not only did we rest just because we had a big run, we also rested today because I don't think anybody uh, wants to make any really big bets uh, ahead of the Fed announcement tomorrow. And you can really see that today um, in the lack of uh, call activity, right? There wasn't really uh, any aggressive calls uh, ahead of the Fed today. There wasn't obviously any puts uh, ahead of the Fed today, ahead of the Fed tomorrow, just because again the market is going linear right now, it keeps on hugging the five-day moving average, and every time it hits the five-day moving average, it bounces. So the idea that the market, quote unquote, was down today, uh, it's not really down. It was a great victory uh, for the bulls, especially the technology bulls. And if you see the stocks that had really, really big runs uh, over the last couple of weeks, or even just recent runs, you, you could clearly tell uh, how good they digested. You know, Amazon is up literally, stock went to uh, 3396 today. The stock is up 96 points uh, in four sessions. It was down 75 cents today, that's it. Uh, Apple broke out yesterday. Uh, we had a nice little bounce today on Apple. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Apple had a really strong move today, held perfectly inside day on half the volume, you know, very, very bullish. Uh, Facebook uh, has been a rock star, down two cents on the day. You kind of get the picture. AMAT uh, has been super duper strong, did absolutely nothing today. These are good things, right? Uh, Zoom had a really, really big run. Again, a blip, right? Stock, think about it. The stock had, uh, has had a run from 330 uh, all the way to 370 in three days, down six points. So the, the bulls did their job. There was absolutely no fear today. Uh, not a lot of clear channels. I, I think that's the, uh, the negative side of a res day. You're not going to get a lot of really big channels. Uh, one way or another, because number one, if you rest, there's not going to be any upside channels that are going to be very strong. Uh, and if obviously, if they're just kind of drifting lower, you're not going to see any fear. So there's not going to be any downside channels because everything, pretty much all the components on the queues are well above, uh, well above not only the 50 day moving average or well above the five day as well. The weird move today came on Roku. Um, and, and again, th there was some news today with Viacom, with Comcast. This is a pretty big move down. Uh, you know, obviously, I was watching this thing for a continuation. If you watched last night's video, I was watching for a continuation above yesterday's channels. Obviously, never got anywhere near, but really, really uh, notable aggressive sell-off here. Uh, you know, towards you know towards uh, the start of the day and really into the close. So uh, we have to see if there's any more tangible news to come out there. But other than that, uh, pretty slow day. Uh, not a lot of pivots. Again, what continues to work. Uh, are the 60-minute bounces. Uh, and if you guys notice, I started 
talking about them more and more on the nightly videos because that's kind of what we've been doing in the webinar. When there's not clear channels to the upside, we're basically taking the stronger names that had big pushes the day before into slow drifts, into rising 60-minute support, and the stocks usually have a good, uh, good, um, uh, good value move uh, off this rising support. So the one thing going into tomorrow is we could probably get another slower day. Number one, again, the market needs to rest, needs to digest recent gains. The last thing you want to see if you're a bull and you believe in the you know, perma, well, not necessarily perma bull, but if you believe in the bull market thesis, the last thing you want to see is people, and including bulls, start talking about uh, too far, too fast. We don't want that. We want nice, slow, methodical, slow growth, price appreciation, dip buying, all that good stuff that makes a healthy bull market. And the most important part of any bull market that is healthy is distribution through many, many groups. And if we've seen that uh, in the banks, they had a nice little pop today, certain names, uh, financial, excuse me, financials, uh, technology, obviously, in the last couple of weeks, the small cap trade uh, has been on there. People are still chasing crazy, crazy things all over the place. Again, be careful with that game. The last person with the chair is probably going to be uh, the winner. But more important, you know, again, guys, remember, you don't need to trade every single day. You don't need, even need to trade aggressively every single day. Uh, today was very, very slow. Yeah, some bounces, no doubt. Um, we're pretty good. Tomorrow has the potential to be another slow day. So the last thing you want to do is take this information ahead of a Fed day and say to myself, F this guy Shapiro, tomorrow should be a great day. Well, based on what? I mean, if today was slow and, and, and channels were contracting today, you know, these aren't, you know, these aren't mixed messages. It's probably going to happen the same thing, uh, going into the Fed meeting tomorrow. And, you know, who knows what they're going to say? Who knows how the market, uh, is going to react to tomorrow's session, just like the way the market is having kind of a break, a little bit of a, a reset, kind of a, a recharge in batteries. Traders do the same thing. We've had some incredible action, uh, especially in the last two weeks uh, with beta, right? With the small caps, with beta, with all that stuff. You need a reset as well. Again, you can't drive 100 miles an hour uh, every single day. Let the market dictate what's your next move. Let the market dictate to you uh, how aggressive or how passive you want to be uh, in a session. Usually you'll find you'll get a lot of clues based on the previous night's research, which is tonight, right? And the last thing you want to do is get super creative. So uh, again, are there names that I like? Yeah, yeah, I do like, like some names, you know, like Airbnb uh, had some pretty aggressive uh, call buying coming in pretty much all day. Uh, it held up very, very well. We actually caught a couple of bounces uh, off some, some levels on there. Uh, the, the breakout, well, I don't want to use the word breakout, but it stalled on the top of the range here, uh, which I really didn't like, but there was a reload buyer here all day. Uh, so if we could start confirming today's channels, maybe, you know, who knows, maybe this thing could light up uh, tomorrow. Macro picture is still a little murky, but there is a potential for the trade. Not the best one, right? Not, definitely not the best one that I like. Um, you know, there's some names here. I, you know, I, I do like this, right? I'm not going to mention the symbol, right? I'm not going to mention it's probably my favorite stock to trade. But, you know, stock got rejected yesterday perfectly, 720, you know, 625, right? Got rejected twice, and now it's kind of coming up on this channel right over here. And it's kind of tested this channel once, twice, three times now. So I'm watching, you know, I'm going to watch Tesla, right? You know, for me, it doesn't make a difference which way this thing trades. We did see some uh, aggressive put buying starting today. And again, is this, you know, for a market that potentially can rest, all you need is one, right? And I can't possibly think of anything better uh, than, than my favorite trading vehicle, no pun intended, that if it starts losing the bottom of this channel here, there's a, you know, there's some pretty decent room down. So I'm definitely keeping an eye on Tesla tomorrow if it starts uh, losing some macro channels. Uh, other than that, you know, let's talk about today's session. You know, again, I don't love anything tomorrow. I don't love, I mean, this could turn into a love fest uh, if a downside channel starts to, to, um, to get hit. But, you know, other than that, I'm not really in love with anything tomorrow. Let's see how we're played by ear. So uh, let's talk about today. So, Pal you know, Plantier or Palantir, whatever the hell you want to, I keep on mispronouncing it. Uh, we were watching this thing for the 2530 break, trade into the 50s. That's really a lot of call buying. They were coming in for uh, the 30 calls, one after another, after another, and it failed. It absolutely failed. Um, I wound up losing like, you know, 16, 17 cents in the trade, not the end of the world. But the point is, I, I didn't like the fact that you had all that 
option flow come in very, very aggressively, and the stock did absolutely nothing. You can tell here, it broke this top of the channel. It's not like it got rejected anywhere. It just literally just kind of lost steam. Uh, we bought it on a pullback into rising support. It just wouldn't let go of it. So again, kind of kind of weird. But again, the most important part is when you see order flow dry up and a stock can't reclaim levels, uh, got to get out of the trade. A uh, big move yesterday in the AYX, obviously never got close to uh, 86. Zoom never got close to the 69, uh, 370 level. They sold it off all day. Uh, excuse me, Roku, Zoom never got to 370, 371. Uh, Tesla obviously not got, didn't get back to the upper range here. Uh, and here's a perfect example where we talk about in the video all the time, where we talk about potential 60 minute bounces. And this is, these are strong stocks that broke out the day before. And if they give you a week open into rising 60 minute support, that's the bounce play. So uh, Apple was actually pretty good. This is, uh, you know, this is a pretty good trade. I, I, we, we, we caught it literally near what, 20, 25 cents off the lows. Uh, potential 60 minute bounce, 129.60s for experienced traders. Obviously, it needs to build 30.60 to build for the more upside. And, and Apple is a really nice move here. So, here's my point of uh, a 60 minute, right? Here's the 60 minute rising support, and it traded right here. We bought the remount, and the stock almost went green on the day. Um, you know, nice move there. You know, really nice move on Apple uh, off the lows. A really wonderful move. So, that's kind of that's what we talk about. Uh, buying strong stocks into rising 60-minute support. And if you look at Amazon, I've been talking about that literally uh, all week. Every single time it touches the bottom of the channel here, it spikes. Reclaim the bottom of the channel, spikes. Reclaim the bottom of the channel, spikes. So that bottom 60-minute support is a really, really good tool. And we've been kind of talking about that uh, for a long time. So nice move on Apple. Uh, also, I caught uh, we caught this um, Airbnb on, on a dip as well. You know, caught it for a little bit less than a dollar. A nice move there as well. Uh, square, nice little pop. I, I personally missed the square trade. Uh, 231.50 needs to build. Uh, it was very fast. It was really at the open. If you caught it, congratulations. I, I you know, I just missed it. Uh, 231.50 went to 233.21, right? You know, went up almost two dollars. If you caught the trade, I, I missed it. This was you know, square uh, eyes never came close to the 750, 760. This was definitely the move of the day for all you guys who did catch shop. Congratulations. Uh, 1312 needs to build. We talked about shop last night on the video here with shop, right? It took out that 1312, this whole channel here, and traded almost the, you know, trade the 1350. Huge, huge move on shop. Congratulations. Again, guys, that's the whole point. You just need one. You don't need to put on 78 positions, be in 20 different stocks at once. You only need one good one uh, to make your nut. And, you know, if you can catch the right one, you do your, your research. Uh, you should be all right. So shop was good. Uh, Wish, not a, not a bad move. Wish, $12 needs to build. Uh, here was Wish right off the open. Here was Wish. You can see here right off the open. Uh, here was Wish off the $12, went to 1250s, and it kind of came back. But not a, not a bad move. Good job for all you guys who caught it. Beyond never got close uh, to the 53.54 area. Uh, yeah, like again, perfect bounce. Now break even as you stop, right? Free trade here, Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb on the natural pivot only went up like 75 cents. Uh, take on the way. Um, let's go, right? Let's go green. It almost got green. Almost got green. But nice, you know, nice bounce on Apple, nevertheless. Um, and that is it, right? Sit tight, guys, right? So, you know, sit tight. Looks like a res drift day. So that's about it, guys. So uh, going into tomorrow, uh, going into tomorrow, you know, I kind of like this AI also. Take a look at this AI. Uh, it held now 47 several times, excuse me, 57 several times this whole range here. Keep an eye on this AI. If it starts losing 57 tomorrow, uh, maybe it gets hit. But, you know, going into tomorrow, I really have no, nothing that I love. Um, I am watching Tesla just in case it finally confirms the downside channel. And the one thing about Tesla compared to everything else uh, when Tesla expands, and you guys see this every every you know every interval when it gets aggressive, both to the long and the short side. When Tesla does expand uh, and it confirms channels, you can have a really really big uh, potential on your hands. So you know I'm going to watch this, and if it doesn't confirm, it doesn't confirm. But at least uh, there is definitely potential if indeed it does. So guys, have a great day. Stay patient, stay calm. Remember, it's not a race. You don't need to trade every day. Uh, see how the day plays out. See early option flow tomorrow. See what's coming in uh, that's coming in aggressive from the option market. Uh, buy those dips on those stocks into rising 60-minute support. See if there's any natural pivots to confirm. Other than that, 
nice and easy, day by day, trade by trade. Guys, have a great night. I'll see you all tomorrow.